Welcome back everyone. In this video, we're gonna be putting together an Alpha 6. You can print all the parts, you can put it together yourself. I have a list of all the material you need to put one together that you can find in the video description or on the website in the description. Some of the parts I'm gonna be supplying or make available in the future. So without further ado, let's dive right in. For optimal fitment and durability, I suggest that you go on the website and make sure you have the latest files. Currently, we're at revision 1.4, so if you don't have revision 1.4 or higher, I suggest that you reach out to me, see if you can uh, get the latest files and get them printed to have the best possible experience. With everything on the table, one of the things I suggest that you start off with is the track. We're using 16 gauge wire or 1.6 millimeter wire. You make little cutouts out of them. These are 53 millimeter long and you have a roughly 36 of them that you need to make. With that being said, let's start assembling the track. When you put it together the track, I suggest that you only push it a little bit inside just so the track holds itself and we'll push it all the way in later. Now you take one of these little torque screwdriver because it has a wide head and you just push the pins all the way in, make sure it's seated all the way. If it's too long, don't push too hard, it could be a bit too long, so just take your time and we will trim them later. As you can see, I have a few there that are a bit too long, so I'm pulling them slightly back out, chopping one or two millimeters off and then pushing them back in. Now I suggest that you use one of these torch lighter. You have enough heat that you can just hit the plastic quickly, it just softens it a bit and then you can fold it back over itself, make sure that it covers the pin properly. You wanna hit the bottom of the tab, you don't wanna hit the entire section. Now the leftover track, we could put it in a bag. We might use it later in the future in case we break something or uh, just wear. Put that in a bag and move on to the frame. Now this part has a few support material that you need to take out. Uh, this is just to prevent material from just uh, warping or um, cause problem after the print or during the print. I suggest that you start by the front end kit because it's often easier to start with that part rather than trying to assemble the front end once everything else is there. So, so you need one of these Traxxas tie rod ends. These are 2742 or 1942 for the bigger packs. What you need is the hex one. You don't want the round ones like this one. The reason why I'm using these is because they are keyed. So they don't spin freely in the A-arm, they're sort of fixed in position, which is how it was designed to be installed. I would suggest that for ease of assembly that you get a set of these uh, 2.5 millimeter drivers. It just makes your life a whole lot easier to assemble it all. I'll put a link in the description on where you can get them. In the front end, you have the option to use either a single M3 by 55 millimeter screw to assemble the A-arms, or you can use two M3 by 25. Uh, you have room for both. I just like to use a single one because it saves a bit of time, but we will install a long one on top 
and two shorter ones in the bottom just to show you both process but it's basically the same thing just don't tighten it too much you can even leave a gap if you want it's stuck in a plastic it won't come off but you don't want to bend the plastic or break it When you're installing the lower A-arm, you gotta make sure the shock support is facing the front of the snowmobile. If it's backward, it won't fit. Installing the ball ends is actually really simple. You just take a plier and you crush the ball in place and you twist back and forth and it's just gonna fall into place. It's quite easy. Now this is a really important step. You need to make sure your servo is first of all working properly and also that it is centered uh, correctly so that when you install your servo arm, it's gonna be in the center and you won't have to add too much trim or take it apart and recenter it. I'm using these 20 kilogram servos uh, mainly because they're super cheap. It has metal gears, it has good performance, good torque and also because it comes with the servo horn. And since I designed my snowmobile around it, I know that I can just use the servo horn that it came with it. Uh, it's also the perfect distance for the position of the skis. But if you're using a different servo or different servo horn, you will likely need to extend or shorten the tie rods. This servo is just gonna be bolt on. I highly suggest that you put some thread lockers on this because I've had a few times where I forgot to put that on and it came loose, uh, so I highly suggest that you put some blue Loctite on it. Red is kind of pointless and none at all is a bad idea, so put some blue Loctite on that and you're not going to have any problems. Now for the steering assembly, you take a single M3x10 screw and you put the two arms of the tie rods together so it looks like a bird. Just place it like that, you put the screw through both pieces. And then you just make it snug on one side so it's flush. And when we are going to assemble it, you just push the servo horn to the side, slide it in. Make, this, make sure the screw goes through the hole inside of the body. Um, it's a bit difficult to show, but if you have it in your hands, you're going to understand fairly easily. Then you push the servo horn back in place, and then you're mostly lined up for installing the screw from the bottom. There's a hole, you pass your driver through it, and you tighten it a bit. Make sure it's flush against the servo horn. There's no gap in between the servo horn and the tie rods. Just be sure to not tighten that screw because if it's too tight, it will sort of bind. So make sure you leave it partially loose. You don't need Loctite on it. Just like that, you're gonna have a working front end. Now for the spindles, you use a single M3x50 screw and you go through everything. Just make it go through all the way. Make sure you leave it partially loose. Now
Now the shocks I'm using is one of those cheap Amazon shocks. Uh, in this case, I highly suggest something that's a bit more high end, but that's what I had on hand. Uh, these are 75 millimeter long and they are, well, honestly quite cheap, but they're gonna do the job in my case. The only problem is that they have one of those ball ends that an M3 screw will not go through it. So I'm taking the ball ends off and I'm gonna use one of these aluminum tubes to use it as a wear surface so it's not too loose but at the same time it's not gonna damage the shocks or anything like that. It's sort of a wear surface. So I just cut a small length of it, place it in the tie rod and install it back in the snowmobile. If you want a high quality shocks, I suggest that you go for the Proline 75 millimeters. They just look awesome and they work really nice. They're super smooth. I highly recommend them. Now to install the shock tower, um, you use these two pieces. This one has some support still on it. You do need a bit of support in the front and the back, but you do not want to have support in the bottom. It's been designed to not require support, so just don't put any and it's gonna print just fine if you have uh, good settings in your printer. When you install these two parts, make sure you have the slot in the back and when you bolt the two parts together, it should look something like this. If you want to save a bit of weight, I also have a version that does not include a brace in it. Either way, it's going to work with or without it. It's been engineered to be strong enough to withstand abuse of both, but the brace is always the best looking one in my opinion, so that's why I'm using it. Now just make sure everything is working properly in this section, the steering is turning properly, good suspension is working properly, nothing's binding or anything like that, and uh, we'll move on to the next step. I suggest that you use a 540 size motor or a 550 size motor, either way a 5mm shaft is highly suggested because the pulley you're using is a 5mm diameter. If you do not have access to a 5mm shaft, you can use a 5mm reducer sleeve that you install. So you install it in between the motor shaft and the pulley. And it's going to be, most, for the most part, just a bolt-on fit. Uh, and it's held in place with the grub screws. Now the motor I want to use uh, is a 540 size motor by Spectrum. Uh, normally I don't have any problem with these motors, but in this case it has a screw at the bottom so it's going to interfere with the install, but uh, I'm just going to heat up the plastic at the bottom, move it a bit, it's going to be fine, but if you use a motor that has a smooth bore, you won't have this problem. Now when you install the motor, I suggest that you use some Loctite and a washer to hold the motor in place, or you can also use a lock washer and a washer, but either way I prefer the Loctite, it's just easier to install but you do need something to prevent the motor from backing off. I'm installing the motor pulley right now, but I'm gonna leave it loose because we're gonna adjust it back and forth. It's just installed temporarily, but when we install it permanently, we're gonna put some Loctite on the screws because we don't want them to come off. Now in these side covers, we will need to install a M3 nut. So the trick I have found that works best is to install the nut on a long screw and you just place it over the hole. You take something and you hit it a couple times and it drops in place. Then you unscrew the screw and it's flush against the part. Now if you don't have the latest file, I suggest that you go get them because you're gonna have this jig that helps you drill the holes and make the flat spot for the main drive shaft. So if you take this shaft for example, it's a blank shaft, 5mm precision shaft. It fits perfectly in the bearings. 
It can either be stainless or brass. I'm working on alternatives, but in the meantime, that's what I know works best. So what you do is you install it in the jig all the way in and you see it needs to be flush against the end of it. This one is a little bit too long, but you install it in and then you place the cover on top of it. This is your drill guide. There is a direction to it, so you install it face down and then you install four M3 by 12 screws. You see this area here, you need to file that up flush against the plastic. That's gonna be just perfect to install the pulley on it later on. You can also file this section here uh, just to help you when you're drilling the holes, but it's not totally necessary. So you install your four screws and you're ready to go. So let's go over the press drill and we will drill it with either a two millimeter or a 564 drill bit. So I'm just lining it up and then add a little bit of oil. The holes have a small taper to them so that you can drop the holes inside of it and it won't uh, spill all over the place. And then you drill the holes. You can drill all three of them or two or one hole. I suggest that you do all three since it's in the jig and it's all lined up. Take your time, drill it properly. Now, since it's still in the jig, you might as well file the flat spot right away. It is still lined up and it is held in place very well, so you might as well do it now. I'm using a triangular file in this case, it's about the right width anyways, and it makes short work of it. It's gonna get something for the grab screw to hold into. This would be a lot quicker if the shaft was brass, but I just want to have a stainless steel shaft because I know it's a lot stronger. Now the only thing left is to cut the end of it so it's flush against the plastic. I also want to deburr the shaft so it's not sharp to the touch. It's also a bit easier to install sometimes when the shaft is deburred. Just like that, a perfect shaft. So when you install the drivers on it, it is going to be a tight fit for the most part. So you can run it back and forth a couple times on the shaft so you know it's well fitted to it. Then when you're ready to install it, you just hold it in place and you slowly drive it with the drill and you watch where the holes line up. And then you take a piece of the wire, the same wire you have used for the track, and you just make sure the holes all line up and you install a M2 by 20 screw. You can use two or three screws, but in my case, if it shears, which I, it hasn't happened so far, but if it shears, I prefer to have only one screw and just like that, it's a perfect fit. Please take note of the orientation of the drivers compared to the flat spot. This is really important. Then you install the pulley on the shaft. Like I said earlier, you want to install the grub screw in place so it holds everything together, but don't put it too tight because we will need to add Loctite later when we know it's exactly in the right position. You want the plastic of the driver to touch the outside bearing and then you tighten the big pulley in place and that's going to be the proper spot for it. Now for the tensioner bearings, we're using two 3x7x3 bearings installed on an M3x12 screw. You screw it all. I have three here in the videos but you need two and that's going to work. Then you put the belt on with the tensioner in place and then you add simply the side cover piece, the bearing cover piece or whatever you want to call that. And then to hold it in place you use two M3x10 for the two top holes, a M3x20 in the front and an M3x25 for the tensioner. Make sure you don't put it too tight, it needs to be slightly loose so the tensioner can move back and forth. Now before we close everything, remember to line up the pulleys and put some Loctite. This is really important because if you don't, they will come loose. And when you set up track tension, you want to make sure your screw is not too tight nor too loose. If it's too tight, they have more chance of snapping. And if it's too loose, it will uh, get grinded out by the pulleys and it might fail. And now that this step is done, you spend the next 20 minutes playing with the gearbox because it's so fun. Now onto the seat section. We're using two M3 by 20 button heads. You bolt the two parts together and then you install this top part. So you push it down and then you slide it forward all the way. 
you want to take it out, you push it all the way back and then you pull it up. Now to make sure the seat clip is in place, you take a pen spring and you cut it in half. And then you take a M3 by 30 partially threaded screw, ideally. If you don't have one that's partially threaded, a full thread will work as well, but it will bind a bit more. It's still gonna work though. And then you crush one of the ends of the spring so it holds firmly against the back head of the screw. And then you install it. You wanna leave something like 10 millimeter of travel, but you will have to fine tune it a bit more because you wanna have all the travel the part can give you, but you don't want it to be too long. If it is a bit too stiff, you could use some grease or file some of the interiors, but it should not be a necessary thing to do. Now for the seat, what you do is you take the tab and you install it in the front. You can use some glue at the back of it. You don't have to though. And then make sure that the taper faces down so that it clips into place really easily. What you do is you slide the seat slightly at an angle, place the front first, pull the tab back, push the seat in place and release the tab. It's simple as that. It's really easy to use it and it works really well. To hold the battery in place, we use a bit of Velcro. Now for the tunnel section, there is some parts at the back of the skit that you will have to trim off first of all, and then you install an M3 by 40. The parts you need to take off is like the support structure to avoid warping for the long and thin parts. It is likely that the part will warp, but at least these parts help it a little bit. If you want to put the LEDs in place, this is the time to do so before you assemble two halves together. Once the screw in the back is installed, you install the four screw to hold the tunnel to the seat. You need to have button head screws because otherwise the track might catch it. And then you can assemble the two halves of the snowmobile together by using M3 by 50 screws. This is where a ball driver is really useful. Now in my snowmobile, I don't want to have some tail lights, but like I said to you earlier, if you want to have LEDs in the back, you use two three millimeter LED bulbs and you find a way to install the wires. I didn't really think this through. I forgot to put a channel for where the wires are going to go. But if you don't want LEDs like I do, you just put the back plate in place. Use two screws M3 by six, ideally button heads. This kit is printed with some support material that you have to take off. I tried to print many, many times without support material, but this is what gave me the best result every time. So you have to take some of the support material off with an X-Acto knife, utility box cutter or something like that. These swing pieces at the back are directional, so make sure you don't mix them. They need to follow the taper of the skid. You use M3 by 25 screws, you use one at the bottom and one at the top. Then you can install a M3 by 30 screw and ideally you use a M3 locking nut or you can use a single nut with some Loctite and you let it dry. I prefer to have the locking nut for convenience. You don't put it too tight because you will damage the plastic, just make it flush. Then you take a single M3 square nut. This is really important to be square. So you drop it in the slot at the back and use something that's pointy and strong to push it all the way in. So what you do is you take an M3 by 25 screw, you dab it in grease, that's really important because if the screw locks into place cold welding it to the nut, you can take it off without damaging the skid. So make sure you put some grease on that. Now here we're doing the same thing we've done in the front, use some shocks and doing some little uh, aluminum inserts to replace the ball ends. But that's just something in my case, you might not have to do that. You could get away with a single shock in a skid. It needs to be able to withstand the weight of the battery and make the suspension work correctly. But if you have one of those Proline shocks, they are a bit stiffer than the shocks I'm using now, so I could get away with a single shock. Now, when you install these shocks, you might have to put a washer in the end of it so it doesn't come off. But like I said to you, if you use some good shocks, you will likely not have to do this. Now for the anti-stab wheels, we're using M3x12 here in the center and we're using 
M3 by 10 in the front here. Absolutely loose because otherwise the wheels won't spin and they won't do their job correctly. So make sure the screws are loose. Now for the tensioner in the front, you have two options. One of them is to use one of these keychain lanyards. Uh, it's made of nylon and it's already pre-made proper length, but uh, it's not as strong as I would like to. Thankfully, somebody else has found a good option is to use one of these two GT belts or GT2 belts. So what you do is either you take a single belt that's 140 millimeter long and you just put two zip ties on it. Or in my case, I don't have one. So what I do is I take the 200 millimeter one the same one for the transmission and I just cut so I have just the proper length to install the two zip ties and have a good working limiter shop. It's a really important thing to have because if you don't, the skid is gonna come at a very steep angle and believe it or not, it's actually really, really bad for performance. So make sure you have a tight limiter shop in the front, something between 10 and 20 millimeter gap between the wheels and the top of the A-arm is ideal. with a big washer. Do it. Now on the back, we're using a brass shaft in this case. So uh, previously I had a skid that the shaft was a bit too loose. So I put some tighter tolerances on the rear. So uh, it's gonna be a bit more difficult to install the shaft in the back, but at least it won't spin on the screw and make a groove in it or hopefully it won't be as bad. In my case, I'm also using a couple of washers in between the wheels to make sure that it's not wearing through the plastic too quickly. I suggest that you do install a few as well. They are M3 washers, stainless of course. I now also offer a set of wheels in the back that you can install that have some holes for a bearing to be installed. They are the same bearings of the tensioner, so the three by seven by three, and you need two per wheels. And then you install those Dubro collars and there you go, you have rear working idler wheels. Now you install the front swing. It's simple, you just put two screws and at the same time, it's gonna give you a lot of strength in the frame. Make sure everything's working properly. And then we do the same thing for the top wheels. When you install the wheels, make sure that the small shaft piece is towards the outside, running against the tunnel. And there you go, just like that, working suspension. Now it's time to install the track. The track is directional, so make sure you install it in the correct orientation. What works best in my case is to glide it through the back of the tunnel all the way to the front and just spin the drive shaft till it's where it's supposed to be. One last piece of wire to attach the two ends of the track together. Heat it up and fold it over. And just like that, your track is assembled. Now for the track tension, what you want to do is make sure that your tension is something close to a finger in between the widest point. In the first stride, your track will expand quite a bit, so make sure you have your driver nearby. Over time, the track might even expand to the point where you need to take one of the track pieces off of it. This is perfectly normal, don't worry about that, it is normal. Now for the rear bumper, it's actually quite simple. I'm using a bunch of M2 by eight screws. There's a few people that are having problem with printing the skis. So I offer two orientation. I highly suggest that you take the one that are 45 degree angled. Reason is they require less support and they have a nicer finish onto them. My skis were just slightly undersized uh, to install M3 screws. So I just drilled them out, but the ones you have in the latest revision, you won't have to do it. And of course, when I drilled them, I drilled them with 1-8 drill bits, so it's a bit too big, so I had to put a nut on the end of it, but normally just the screw is gonna work. 
the skis are directional so what you need to keep in mind is that you can put it either left or right but it will affect how wide the skis are it is starting to really look like a snowmobile now isn't it now i won't be installing the esc just yet reason is uh, this esc doesn't have a external switch so normally i would attach the external switch to the inside of the handlebars but in this case i forgot that this esc doesn't have one so i can't install it just now when you install this piece make sure the bearing is in all the way Otherwise, it's not going to do its job properly and it's going to be pulled out a bit. Use two M3x20 screws in the bottom and two M3x10 screws up top. And then it's time to install the running boards. The two top holes are inside the tunnel, so you can put screws as long as you want. But the bottom one is a different length because it's inside the tunnel, so you need to have a screw that's a bit shorter for this. So I'm using two M2x20 screws for the top holes, and the bottom is a single M2x6. Going back to the ESC, you can either install it to this flat plate right here, or you can install it to the side right beside the motor or you can even put your ESC over here if you want to depending on what you're using you might want to play around with where you install that stuff but one thing is sure you have your battery in the seat that's a perfect spot for it now if you want to install LEDs in the front you're using five millimeter LEDs there's two per side and normally what I'm doing is I'm installing two in series on each body panels and I have a connector in between so all of this is connected to a 6 volt power by the ESC if you're using 7.4 volts I suggest that you install a either 50 ohm resistor or a 100 ohm resistor now in the front I'm using two M3 nuts to hold the body panel in place I'm using a pull technique with this screw it's a good idea to install some grease now because it's not going to be as fun to do it later. To install the side panels, what you do is you install the running board in place first, you push it through, and then you gently try to push it in place, go slowly, make sure it doesn't catch on the seat section. Like we talked about earlier, you really do not want these cold fuels to the nut, because otherwise you won't be able to take it off. Now for the handlebar, what I'm doing is I print it all on TPU, uh, same as the spindle. So you just, uh, to take the supports off of it, you just rip the end of it on both sides. And then you take it from the center with a pair of pliers and you just rip. Due to the nature of TPU, however, there's often some burrs left inside or some impurities. So what you do, so you take your lighter and you just uh, model it with your fingers a bit. Don't get carried away too much with the heat. A little heat goes a long way, so take your time and do it well. It's gonna improve the look quite a bit. So you have a few screws. You have one on the bottom, one on the front, one at the top. And you also have the option to use one in between, kind of in a nose section. I didn't put one in this case, but it could be a single M3x40 or a M3x55 with a nut on the end of it. It's up to you. And with that being said, snowmobile is complete. Make sure everything works properly. Make sure the track, the steering is working properly. Make sure you didn't skimp any steps. It's also a good idea to do a double check, make sure you have grease on everything that is metal and also make sure that your pulleys are lined up correctly and that you've put some Loctite. And that being said, it's a pretty complete build. I hope you enjoyed the build process. I certainly enjoyed making it. It's one of these snowmobiles that performs really well in the snow. If you have any feedback for me, just uh, leave it in the video description or just go on the website and let me know what you think and I will try to improve it. It's a pretty complete build. I tried to iron out all the bugs, so with that being said, 
I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you next time. Thanks for riding with me.